Hi chess fans, welcome to this video. We will look at a game between Wesley So with the white pieces against Magnus Carlsen with the black pieces played, uh, played today in St. Louis at the Sinkerfield Cup. And it's a very short game but I found it interesting because um, black kind of gets a little bit into trouble but then finds interesting resources and I think the way that black played this is very instructive. So Wesley so played e4, Magnus Carlsen responded with e5, knight f3, knight c6, d4. And after the game Magnus said that um, he was a bit surprised by the scotch. And so maybe it's interesting to see how Magnus chooses to play when he is surprised in the opening. A little bit. And after e takes d, knight takes. The main line continues with b c5. And then, for example, bishop e3, queen f6. But here Magnus played a little bit of a sideline move, bishop b4, check. And after c3, the main line, um, in this side variation, he played bishop to e7. And again, the main line is bishop c5, bishop e3, bishop e6, and then things like this. But in this position, he played bishop e7, trying to... Um, disrupt his opening preparation by not playing the main lines here. And so after knight, c, knight takes uh, c6, the game continued with uh, b takes c, um, bishop d3, Wesley so develops, d6, castle, knight f6, castles, knight d2, both sides, de sides develop, rook e8, knight f3, and now in this position, uh, Magnus has the plan of um, kind of like dealing with this knight here, which can potentially be attacked by white. And his plan is to play knight d7 and bring the knight to the square uh, on c5, where it can attack the bishop on d3 and the pawn on e4. And at the same time, if white would um, try to chase the knight away, he would maybe create some weaknesses here. The bishop f4, knight c5. White simply played bishop to c2. And then black played um, bishop g4 and um, Wesley played h3. And now after bishop h5, have a look at this position. This is very interesting. Um, the bishop is disrupted from his diagonal here and a little bit misplaced or has a few has has a bit less activity here and the knight here is maybe also um, placed a little bit awkward how can white take advantage of these um, of these two slightly misplaced pieces okay white can play bishop e3 here attacking the knight on c5 and the point is that um, if the knight for example moves to e6 White can simply attack the weak pawn on c6, which is pinned against the rook, and take advantage of the fact that the bishop is not here anymore to guard this diagonal. And there's not much that black can do to protect the pawn, and um, black will lose the pawn here. If black plays knight a6 with the idea of guarding the pawn with knight b8, white can simply play e5, disrupting the black pawn structure, and then play bishop a4 with the same idea. And after knight to b8, white can simply take this pawn. And also um, attempts like bishop b4, in the end white will win the pawn, and in this case also the exchange. So this is kind of the problem in um, this is kind of the problem in um, Black's position, the weakness on c6 combined with these two slightly misplaced pieces. And so after bishop e3, Magnus played knight to d7 to at least close this diagonal so that after bishop a4 he can play c5 without losing a pawn. Okay, so the game continued g4, bishop g6, and now Wesley played e5, trying to highlight the 
weaknesses in um, weaknesses in black's position because this knight is pinned against the rook and therefore um, the knight cannot perform the function of um, protecting the um, e5 square and so white is trying to take advantage of this. So white is having an attack where these pieces here coordinate to attack and is there any opportunity that arises from this for, for black? And this is what I found very instructive about this game. What should black play here? What is the best attempt for black? Again, if black doesn't do anything, for example, if black moves the king here, white can simply gang up his pressure on this point here. And let's say black doesn't do anything, then the position simply collapses. Um, and everything everything falls. So that's what that's the the threat here by white. And Magnus played um, in this position rook to b8, trying to get a bit of counterplay. So that's the one thing of course that we can learn. If your opponent has some attack, try to get some counterplay. But why is this particularly strong? So obviously um, white has committed to play his pawn here to e5. So if the bishop moves back to guard this threat by, um, by black, then um, black can simply win a pawn. So that's not possible. On the other hand, if, um, as in the game, um, black continues his attack, um, and white continues his attack, black does get some counterplay, as we will see in the game. The funny thing is the best move in this position would have been b3, countering the attack by black, and still having all the resources in the position as before. Um, and this bishop here looks a bit bad on this square. And it actually is bad on this square, but it can also not be attacked so easily. And at the moment, it still performs the function of supporting the attack. But this is a hard decision to make um, because you don't want to lock your bishop out in the open. And also white feels very confident about this play right now. But the point is that after after Wesley played bishop b4, rook takes, wins a pawn for now. So white will have to prove that he is having compensation for this pawn. And after uh, e takes, bishop takes, rook takes check as a Zwischenzug, takes, takes, white has won back the pawn, but black gets um, a mating attack. White has to react with queen to g3. And so what do you think about the features in this position? Um, what should black play in this position and what are now the resources that black has? Okay, first of all, this knight is attacked, so it has to move. But where should this knight move? Um, maybe into the attack? No, because there's a mate. <laughs> um, what if the knight went here? Could be. But then black still has the problem of the back rank weakness. So Carlsen actually played knight f8, and that's quite interesting because the knight looks a little bit passive here. But essentially, um, Carlsen is saying, okay, my king is super safe now, and your king is super weak. And this is the key feature in this position. And so black has gotten some play. Um, white has had the good pressure and was trying to take advantage of the misplaced piece and now suddenly black has play. And this is very interesting. Um, just a few moves ago um, in this position, think about if you had played rook b8. Um, CC uh, counterplay if you can, especially if the best move for white means uh, putting your position and putting your pieces in funny positions. Okay, so after knight f8, white played rook to e1, attacking the queen, asking the queen, where do you go? This is square here, um, 
is controlled by the knight, the square is controlled by the bishop, all of those squares are controlled by the rook, so the queen has to move away and white is trying to uh, white is trying to ask back, okay, so what are you going to do? Normally in an attack, you don't want to exchange pieces, so maybe white was a little bit surprised after black played rook to b1. And what's the point here? After rook takes, bishop takes, what is black's tactical resource in this position? So what the pawn is attacked, what after white takes, white plays a3 to move the pawn away, or similarly um, bishop to b3, protecting the pawn, what is black's tactical resource? Black can play bishop to e4, attacking the knight two times, and if the knight was to move away, there is a mate coming. So as a consequence of this, the white king has to move up. But now, um, or the, uh, um, rather, the knight. Well, if the king moves up, white is in trouble as well, because um, black can bring in the knight. Um, after creating some luft for his king, he can bring in the knight. Um, on the very nice square of f4, and maybe the little bit stronger attack uh, defends knight h2, so as to bring the knight to um, f1 and guard this line, um, runs into this um, bishop and the queen attacking the knight, so in this position white is stuck. Um, the king and the queen have to defend the knight, the knight cannot move away, so these two pieces here control these three pieces here and now black simply can uh, follow the plan of creating uh, some luft for the king and then just moving the knight in and win the position. Okay, so um, this threat of bishop to e4 is so strong that white had to play bishop to c6 here. And black simply took the pawn. And after queen d6 attacking the um, pawn, what is the easiest way for black to win the position? Very simple, protecting the pawn, keeping, um, keeping the extra pawn, and marching this pawn forward. And that's it. The king is super safe and the white king is still open. And this is just key in the position also with opposite colored bishops. Um, the side who has the higher king safety is usually much better off. And in this position, in addition to that, uh, Magnus also has the extra pawn. So after knight e5, queen takes. Black now has two extra pawns. Wesley so resigned. So mind the counterplay. Uh, if you got a good position like Wesley, be aware of the counterplay. And if you got a bad position after the opening, uh, like Magnus, look out for moves such as um, such as rook b8 in this position. Um, white is feeling pretty good about the pin and about the attack, but look out for moves like rook b8 that can get you some nice counterplay. And just a few moves later, you got a good attack and a super safe king and a one ending. Okay, thanks a lot for watching. See you next time.